before beginning this procedure, obtain a hotline hold order. This precaution places the automatic recloser in a manual position. That setting defeats the recloser from automatically re-energizing the line if any adverse condition should cause the recloser to operate. Next, hold a tailgate conference to make sure each crew member understands the complete procedure. Once work begins, no changes in the procedure should be made unless the entire crew completely comprehends each change beforehand. Remember to refer to OSHA regulations for hot stick clearances. Conductive slippers or conductive boots are worn at all times to keep workers at the same potential as the structure. Installing the base hardware for the insulated ladder, which will extend parallel to the insulator string, begins the tool setup procedure. The ladder attaches to the base and temporarily suspends in a vertical position. Then, two sets of blocks with swivel sticks, which will support the ladder in a horizontal position, hang from nylon slings located on the tower directly above the ladder base. Take care to hang the slings at least half the ladder's length above the base. Next, the groundmen use tag lines to pull the bottom of the ladder eight or 10 feet away from the structure and take up on the blocks to raise the ladder into its horizontal working position. After installing the boom base on the tower, they bolt the boom mast to the base. Three poles are used to brace the mast. Each pole pins to the top of the mast and attaches to the structure with tower saddles. To make the mast a stable pivot point for easy control when moving the boom, make sure the mast is plumb. Adjust and secure the saddles on the brace poles while checking the mast with a level from at least two sides. Then bring up the boom and pin the bottom end to the base of the mast. Notice at top left how an extra pole clamp backs up the tower saddle on each brace pole. An insulated link stick connects the free end of the boom to a chain hoist hung in the eye at the top of the mast. The chain hoist controls the angle of the boom.
once the two workers get situated on the ladder. It swung toward the conductor, but no closer than the seven foot minimum clearance required for 345 kV hot stick work. As the corona ring gets removed, a plastisol coated fuse puller tool carries it on a universal pole supported by the boom while a ratchet wrench loosens the bolts to free the corona ring. The crew moves the boom to one side, so it's not directly above the insulator string as the corona ring comes off and lowers out of the work area. The cold end yoke attaches to the tower with a steel chain provided. The small yellow line tied to the yoke lets another worker support the yoke plate while it's being attached to the structure. As a team, the crew maneuvers the hot end yoke plate and one strain pole into place. As the side opening insulator cradle raises into position, Notice the second strain pole is suspended from the back side. Then the second strain pole slides onto the hot end yoke plate and pins in place using a grip all clamp stick. And the other end fits into the cold end yoke plate and a ratchet wrench applies enough tension to hold the strain poles assembled in place. A static ground is attached to the tower and clamps onto the cap of the second insulator. This prevents the worker on the tower from getting in series with the insulator string. Next, the cotter key gets pulled on the socket at the hot end. Taking just enough tension on the strain poles allows the insulator string to disengage. Any of several universal tools can be used to disconnect the hot end. Pulling on the load line lifts the insulator string clear of the strain poles. Only when the string is in the clear can the static ground be removed from the end of the insulator string. After the insulators have been replaced, the new string can be raised and positioned so the static ground may be clamped on the cold end. Then the hot end can be reconnected and the cotter key driven in. A universal tool mirror should always be used to check that both the socket and key are in place for a secure connection. The cradle now aligns the cold end of the string and it's reconnected. The ratchet wrench relieves tension on the strain poles and the static ground is removed from the cold end and lowered to the ground. Then the first strain pole is disconnected from the cold end and then from the hot end and lowered to the ground. Now the cradle lowers and swings clear of the insulator string then also lowers to the ground. Next, the hot end yoke and the strain pole come off using the boom and a padded hook.
then the corona ring goes back on, held by the plastisol coated fuse puller tool on a universal pole supported by the boom. An all angle cog wrench and socket snug the bolts first. Then a universal ratchet applies the final torque. Finally, the boom gets removed and lowered to the ground. Next, the mast and its brace poles are disassembled and lowered. Then the ladder is let down to a vertical position for easy lowering to the ground to complete the operation.